Hi, the purpose of this video is to help you discover the exponent rule for multiplying quantities with the same base and then to use that rule to simplify algebraic expressions. Rather than me merely tell you the exponent rule, let's see if we can figure out what the rule would be just based on what the meaning of an exponent actually is. Looking at x to the third, that really just means x times itself three times. So I'm going to rewrite x to the third by expanding it out. And that's just a fancy way to say x to the third. x to the fourth, however, means x times itself four times. So I would be multiplying by four more additional x's. You can see that the result of what I got looks like a string of seven x's all in a row multiplying each other. And of course we know a more compact way of writing that. You can say that that came out to x to the seventh, because that's what the meaning of x to the seventh is. I wouldn't want to use this exact process for this problem because you can see these exponents are so large that I would have more x's than would fit on this screen but I can still envision what it would look like. x to the 500th would look like 500 little x's all in a row, and then x to the 200th would add an additional number of factors of x, 200 of them. And the resulting string of multiplication would look like 700 x's all in a row multiplying each other. So essentially, this comes out to x to the 700 if I merely think about what it would look like if I were to expand it. As you can see, for any problem that has x to some power times x again to some power, that the number of x's that would end up being in that string or that product would be as many as m plus n together. So the way we write the rule is x to the m times x to the n power is equal to x to the m plus n. And that is your first rule of exponents. So, the summary of all this is that whenever we have like-based things, these things have to match, I can use this legal shortcut and merely get the same base to the sum of the two exponents. Let's go ahead and try using some of these ideas. I've written a series of problems here. Let's do the first one. x to the 20th just looks like 20 x's. x to the 4th looks like 4 more x's and they're all in one unbroken string of multiplication. So what that would give me would be x, oops, need the pen, x to the 24th. Then for this one down here, you may say, wait, this doesn't have any exponents. Remember that whenever an x doesn't have an exponent, it really is implied to be x to the first power. So really, there were exponents there. We just maybe didn't realize it. So we add those. x times x gives me x squared. Coming down to this third example, notice what I have are three x's multiplied by four y's. Now unfortunately, they were not all x's, so I can't just merely give my answer as x to some power. And they weren't all y's, so I can't merely say that it was y to some power. It turns out for this problem, the most simple way to write it was the way it was originally written. So for something like this, if somebody asked me to simplify this, because these bases were not the same as each other, I would know that this one could not be simplified. And I'd just say that it couldn't be simplified, or I would rewrite the original problem so that the person grading my paper would know that they can't be simplified. Now for a couple of problems that require more thinking. What is 2 to the 7th? It means seven twos all multiplied together. 
and then we have 20 more 2's multiplying that. So what it looks like to me is a whole bunch of 2's. In fact, 2 to the 27th. So I added the exponents because the bases were alike. Be careful to resist the urge to multiply the bases together and say it's 4 to some power. These are all 2's. They never somehow magically become 4's. Let's look at down at the next example. Now I have a more complicated quantity being raised to the 10th, but here's that very same quantity being raised to the 80th. So picture 10 of these standing next to 80 more of them. How many of them would there be in all? Well, there would be 90 of those little x plus 4 factors. So the rule goes the same, even if the quantities that are serving as the base are more complicated. Let's tackle these last three problems. Example 6 shows, again, you have the same base, so we may add the exponents. So in doing this problem, we're going to have that same base to the 3y plus 2 plus 10y plus 4, or simply x to the, and you can combine the like terms, 13y plus 6. So this right here would be the simplification of that problem right there. So the moral of that story is don't let complicated looking exponents change what you do with them. You always add the exponents if the bases are alike. Coming down to example 7 and 8, these are different. All of the problems that we've done before had to do with multiplying one quantity by another. Notice number 7 and 8 have to do with adding quantities again. So this revisits the stuff that we've been doing since the beginning of the year, where we either add the two terms together because they're like terms, or if they happen to be unlike terms, we have to leave the expression the way it looks. So for this problem, we have 3x squared added to 2x squared. So 3 of these plus 2 of these give me 5. 5 what, you say? 5 of these x squareds. Notice I did not add the exponents because I was not multiplying two quantities together. Coming over to example 8, now I have 3x squared plus 4x to the third. Well, we're back to being addition again, but what I have is 3 of these plus 4 of something different. See, x squareds and x to the thirds are not the same. So though I can add them by putting a plus sign between them, I can't simplify the result because I'm adding and the two terms happen to be unlike terms. So this right here is as far as I can go. This would be the most simple way that I could express that quantity. Now it's your turn. Here are four problems for you to try and you should bring your results to your teacher in class. I hope you found this video helpful.